Hello, saints, peace, love, grace of Christ Jesus be with all of you. And I hope everybody's having a fantastic day today. We just finished up our Acts chapter 4 study, and we're about to get into chapter 5, moving closer to the stoning of Stephen, the pivot point. Now, why is Stephen the pivot point, you might be wondering? Well, it's because what the nation of Israel does to Stephen will determine their future. Will they go into Daniel's 70th week or will something else happen? Perhaps a secret that God hasn't revealed yet. We'll see. Now, at this point, for the believing Jews, the little flock of believers under Peter and the other 11 apostles, they're preparing to enter the day of the Lord. The Holy Spirit is giving them specific gifts needed to make it through Daniel's 70th week. We read about this period of time in Joel 2 and in our study on Acts chapter 2, specifically in verse 17. There's a reason why God is giving these gifts to the apostles. In the last study, I told everyone to go read the book of James for homework. And if you did, you saw that James wrote this to the little flock that we're speaking about. They were scattered throughout the region because of the persecution happening in Jerusalem. And in the book of James, you read James, uh, his instructions to and for this little flock and how they need to act and what they need to do to survive the coming day of the Lord, Daniel's 70th week. Now, let's look at a few verses in James and see what they're going to have to do in the last days into Daniel's 70th week. In James 1, verse 1, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting, my brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. When will this temptation come their way? The deception that God allows to fall on mankind when the first seal is opened and the deceiver comes to power. Verse 3, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. James 1, 12, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Remember, endure to the end. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. In verse 22, but be ye doers of the word. We see works there, faith plus works, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. James 2.17, even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works and I will show thee my faith by my works. In verse 24, Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise, also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works, when she had received the messengers, and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. In James 5, 7, Be patient therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. We see the second coming here. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the early and latter rain. Verse 13, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, 
and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Look at verse 15 real close. You see miraculous healing. You see resurrection and forgiving sins. All by praying the prayer of faith. Now I hope that you can see that's not for our period of time right now in the dispensation of grace. Because none of this is happening anywhere in the world right now. This is for the little flock. The believers, the Jewish believers going through Daniel's 70th week, the day of the Lord. Now, in fact, if you read all the books from Hebrews through Revelation, they all follow this same line of works program. Directly opposite from what Paul teaches us in his 13 books, Romans through Philemon. So now you know this is 2 Timothy 2.15. This is what right division of God's word is all about. You see, James, or Hebrews through Revelation, is all about faith plus works. Because that's the kingdom program. The little flock will have to repent and believe and perform, endure till the end to be saved as a nation. The wise believers will have the fruit or the oil to prove their faith and unbelievers won't have that fruit they won't have that oil that's the difference between the sheep and the goats and i bet the light bulb for some people might have come on while they were reading the book of james and suddenly it all made sense that james is not written to and for us today in the body of christ it's written to those in the kingdom program the little flock in the last days and if the light bulb didn't come on for some of you, hang in there, it will. Right division is a wonderful thing. It will set you free, guaranteed. It set me free after 30 years of denominational nonsense. The first reason the apostles have the power to perform the miracles of healing, raising the dead, speaking in other languages and so on, is because this power proves the apostles have supernatural power which points directly to the person they're preaching about Jesus Christ the son of the most high God so the first reason is for a witness it's a testimony the second reason why they have these miraculous abilities is because they're about to enter Daniel's 70th week and we know that they'll have to endure till the end well, how can they endure till the end if the Antichrist kills them first? You see, during, during Daniel's 70th week, these miracles and powers will once again be given to the little flock to keep each other alive, to keep them healthy, to keep them well, so they can make it to the end of Daniel's 70th week and be saved when they call on the name of the Lord. We saw in our last study in chapter 4, that God will provide for the little flock, the believers. God will provide them with food and necessities required to endure to the second coming of Jesus Christ. God is going to give, uh, have to feed them because the Antichrist is going to control all the food on the earth during that time. And the only way to get food will be to take the mark of the beast and worship the Antichrist as God. It's coming, folks. So, to sidestep the Antichrist, God is going to give the believing remnant food, water, clothing, and He's going to give them the power to heal themselves, to cure themselves, to cure diseases, so they can make it to the end. If you recall from chapter 4, our study in chapter 4, in Matthew 6, Jesus tells the little flock not to worry over what they shall eat or what they shall wear. Jesus gives them an example of how the birds are fed by God every single day. And they don't have to worry about anything. Jesus then gives them a pattern to follow when they pray. Give us this day our daily bread. Deliver us from temptation. 
the way they're going to get food and necessities during Daniel's 70th week will be by, prior, by prayer, supernaturally, by believing in God. Now, look at the contrast between the kingdom gospel and the gospel for today, the gospel of grace. Look closely at 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 in verse 10. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. In the kingdom gospel, in their program, the little flock, the believing Jews, God will have to provide for them to sidestep the Antichrist. So they're going to pray for provisions and receive everything supernaturally, just like they did with the manna in the wilderness. In our program today, the Dispensation of Grace, you can pray until you're blue in the face and food will not magically appear in your refrigerator. Paul tells us we need to work for our food today. But in Daniel's 70th week, they won't be able to work because in order to work, you're going to have to take the mark of the beast in your hand or in your forehead. God will have to provide for them. So there's a seeming, a seeming contradiction between scriptures. Only if you don't rightly divide. But when you do rightly divide, it's obvious there's two distinct groups of people. Two different dispensations. Two different periods of time two different administrations there is no contradiction here it all makes sense because now we know who's who in scripture so we know who's talking we know who's being spoken to and we know what the little flock of Jewish believers are thinking in their heads at this point as we move into Acts chapter 5 in verse 1 but a certain man named Ananias with his with Sapphira his wife sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Ananias was being deceptive and didn't give all the money for the property that he'd sold. He kept some secretly. He was keeping it from the apostles. He was being dishonest. Verse 3, But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. He died. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. Buried Ananias. Okay, a couple things we need to discuss at this point. First, why will the believers have to sell everything as they go into the last days, into Daniel's 70th week? Remember, God is going to provide for them in the, in the kingdom. They won't need anything. So all these things they sell, they can prepare a little bit at first to help each other out as they go into the day of the Lord. Look at Matthew 21 real quick. In verse 21, Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful. For he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, That a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle, Than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. In the kingdom, they won't need to own anything. God will provide all things to them. Remember, when Jesus comes at the second coming, he's bringing the kingdom of heaven with him. It's literally going to be heaven on earth, the earthly kingdom. The earth will be restored. Food will be made healthy. Animals will be happy. People will be prosperous. Things, 
Literally, heaven will be brought to the earth. This is the earthly kingdom promised to the 12 tribes. And those who don't want to give away their stuff because gold and silver is more important to them than the kingdom is, here's what happens to them. Look at Luke 17 and verse 31. In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. What do you think the rich people are going to do when they're outside doing something, they're busy, and they have gold bars and silver bars and stacks of cash inside their little safe in their mansion? You think they're going to leave that all behind and run? Or do you think because of their greedy hearts, they're going to go back into their house, they're going to try to load up all their gold and their silver and their money, well, Jesus tells them, if you do that, you're dead. You're done. He says, don't do that. Don't worry about the material stuff. It's not going to help you in the kingdom. Because you're not going to own anything anyway. Remember Lot's wife, in verse 32. Remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. Whoever tries to hold on to their houses, their cars, their money, their gold bars, their silver bars, and all these things will be caught by the Antichrist and they're going to lose their lives and their souls. But those people who focus on the Lord, focus on enduring till the end, and rely solely on God to provide for them, they will endure. They will be protected. They will be healed. They will be given food by the Lord, and their lives will be saved. Keep in mind still, they all think they're headed into the day of the Lord at this point in Acts chapter 5. And they really are. But there's still a secret hidden in God that, that's going to be revealed through Paul very soon. Next verse, verse 7. And it was not it was about a space of three hours after when his wife, Sapphira, not knowing what was done, came in. She didn't know her husband died because he lied to the Holy Spirit. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. See, she just lied. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together, her and her husband, to tempt the Spirit of the Lord. Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in, and found her dead, and carried her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church, and upon as many as heard these things. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest, there's no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes, both men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one of them. There were thousands and thousands and thousands of people being healed in verse 17. And there was also a small group of believers saying, I command you, Holy Spirit, to make this one leg grow out longer than the other and avoiding those who were really sick. Oh, wait, that's not King James. Verse 17. Then the high priest rose up and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees. Who are the Sadducees? We went over this yesterday. The Sadducees are sad because they don't believe in their resurrection and were filled with indignation and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in common prison but the angel of the lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said go 
stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came, and they that were with him, and called the council together, and all the senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison truly found we shut with all safety, and the keeper standing without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within. Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priest heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they have brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Now they want to kill them. Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of law, had in reputation among all the people and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space and said unto them ye men of Israel take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men for before these days rose up Thutis boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of men about 400 joined themselves who was slain and all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to not. After this, after this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing, and drew away much people after him. He also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men, and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. And to him they agreed. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you notice what the enemy is doing at that time period, he's trying to stop the gospel from being heard. He's threatening the apostles. He's arresting the preachers. Doesn't that sound like what's going on right now in our world? You can't say Jesus in the schools. You can't say Jesus in the military. You can't say Jesus in the government. We're seeing the signs all around us that something big is heading this way very soon. Now, in closing, we're getting very close to Stephen, his event at this point. The Holy Spirit will seek an answer from the nation of Israel, either to repent and call on Jesus as Messiah or to deny Jesus yet again. So their mindset at this point is they're in the last days. They're preparing for the arrival of the Antichrist. Stephen is their only hope at this point, but they're still blinded by the enemy. Lastly, this is all about the little flock, the Jewish believers under the 12 apostles. 
there is no body of Christ yet. That's still a hidden secret in God. There is no Apostle Paul, but that's all coming very soon. And there's going to be a shift in dispensations from kingdom to grace within the next few months. Thanks for studying with me, saints. Peace, grace, love of Christ Jesus be with all of you. Lord willing, we'll study together again in chapter 6 of the book of Acts.